What if the biggest decisions affecting your life weren't made by elected officials but instead by faceless corporations? Imagine a world where the very fabric of our democracies, the decisions that shape our societies and the policies that impact our everyday lives are influenced, not just by our elected officials, but also by corporate entities. This is not a dystopian future, but a reality we grapple with today. Welcome to the complex and often controversial world of corporate influence in democratic processes. It's a world where corporations, through various means, have a say in policymaking and governance. A world where the power of the purse often speaks louder than the voice of the people. Let's first tackle the basic concepts. Lobbying, for instance, is a practice that allows businesses, organizations, or individuals to influence lawmakers and policy decisions. It's a game of persuasion and negotiation, often played behind closed doors. While it's a legitimate part of our democratic processes, it raises questions about who really holds the power in our societies. Then there's campaign financing, essentially, it's the funding that corporations provide to political campaigns. It's a significant part of the political landscape, and it's perfectly legal. However, when corporations donate vast sums of money to politicians, it's hard not to wonder if they're buying influence rather than simply supporting a candidate. These are just the tip of the iceberg. There's a whole universe of tactics corporations employ to influence our democratic processes. The impact of these tactics is far-reaching and often subtle. It's not just about the policies that get passed, but also about who benefits from them and who bears the brunt of their consequences. As we delve into real-life examples, think about this. Is it right for corporations to have such a significant say in our democratic processes? This question is not just philosophical but practical, and its answer will shape the future of our democracies. Imagine a corporation spending millions to influence lawmakers. Sounds like a plot from a dystopian novel, doesn't it? But it's a reality we live in. Lobbying, in essence, is the act of individuals or organizations attempting to persuade government officials to make decisions that align with their interests. It's a practice as old as democracy itself, but with corporate interests at stake, the scale and impact have grown exponentially. Let's delve into the world of lobbying. Using the case study of big pharmaceutical companies in the United States, an industry known for its deep pockets and influential reach, the pharmaceutical industry, or as it's commonly called Big Pharma, has a vested interest in shaping healthcare policy and drug pricing. After all, these policies directly impact their bottom line. So it's no surprise that they spend lavishly on lobbying efforts. Between pharmaceutical manufacturers, distributors, and retailers, billions are spent each year courting lawmakers. These funds are used to promote policies favorable to the industry, such as extending patent protections, limiting generic competition, or influencing the pricing of drugs. These lobbying efforts often yield significant results. For instance, patent extensions can delay the entry of cheaper generic drugs into the market, maintaining a monopoly for the original manufacturer. The impact? Higher drug prices for consumers and a healthcare system strained under the weight of these costs. But it's not all doom and gloom. Lobbying can also serve a beneficial purpose. It can provide lawmakers with crucial industry insights, helping them make more informed decisions. Additionally, lobbying can promote research and development, leading to innovative treatments and potentially life-saving drugs. Take the development of new cancer treatments, for instance. Lobbying efforts by pharmaceutical companies have led to increased funding for research, resulting in new drugs that have improved survival rates and quality of life for patients. However, the balance of power in this relationship is crucial. When lobbying efforts tip the scales too far in favor of corporate interests, the public good can be compromised. This is especially true if lawmakers lack the resources or expertise to critically evaluate the information presented to them by lobbyists. So, where does this leave us? Lobbying, like any tool, can be used for both good and ill. It's a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it can provide valuable insights and drive innovation. On the other, it can lead to policies that favor corporate profits over public health and welfare. As we navigate the complex world of corporate influence on democracy, we must strive for transparency, accountability, and balance. These are not just ideals, but necessities in ensuring that our democratic processes are not unduly influenced by corporate interests. Clearly lobbying can have far-reaching impacts on policymaking. But what about when money flows directly into election campaigns? Imagine if your vote had a price tag. Well, in a way it does, thanks to campaign financing. Let's delve into the world of campaign financing. This is the engine that powers the political machine. 
It's the cash that pays for the TV ads, the billboards, the rallies. It's what allows a candidate to get their message out to you, the voter. But where does this money come from? Well, a hefty chunk of it comes from corporations. To illustrate this, let's look at the 2012 US presidential election. It was one of the most expensive in history. The candidates, Barack Obama and Mitt Romney, spent a staggering total of about $2 billion. Yes, you heard that right, $2 billion just on one election. But here's the kicker. A significant part of that money came from corporations. They donated millions to both candidates. Now you might be wondering, why would corporations spend so much on an election? The simple answer is influence. You see, corporations aren't just faceless entities. They have interests, agendas, and they want to protect them. So they pour money into campaigns, hoping that if their candidate wins, they'll have a friend in high places, a friend who can make decisions that favor their business. For instance, a corporation might want lower taxes or fewer regulations. Or maybe they want a lucrative government contract. By funding a candidate, they're essentially buying a chance to have their interests considered when policies are made. In the 2012 election, we saw this play out. Corporations donated generously to both camps, hedging their bets. They wanted to ensure that no matter who won, they had a friend in the White House. But here's where it gets murky. When corporations fund campaigns, they're not just supporting a candidate. They're buying influence. And that can lead to policies that favor corporations, not the people. It can lead to a government that is more responsive to the needs of big business, rather than the needs of the citizens. It's a delicate balance. On one hand, campaign financing allows candidates to reach voters and share their message. But on the other hand, it opens the door for corporations to exert an undue influence on our democracy. So we find ourselves in a conundrum. We need money to run campaigns, but that money can distort the democratic process. It can give corporations a louder voice than the average citizen. And that's not how a democracy should work. When corporations fund campaigns, it raises questions about who our elected officials truly represent. But how does all this affect you and me? Well, that's the million dollar question, or maybe, considering the cost of modern campaigns, it's the billion dollar question. Let's explore that next. So we've seen how corporations can influence politics, but what does that mean for you and me? It's easy to think of corporate influence as something that happens in the lofty echelons of power, far removed from our daily lives, but the impacts are far closer to home than we might think. Corporate influence shapes the very laws that govern our society, the services we receive, and even the products we consume. Take, for instance, the case of net neutrality. Now, net neutrality is the principle that all internet traffic should be treated equally, without any discrimination or preference given to certain types of content. It's what keeps the internet a level playing field, ensuring that everyone has the same access to information and opportunities. However, in the past few years, we've seen a concerted push from certain telecommunications corporations to dismantle net neutrality. These corporations argue that they should be allowed to prioritize certain types of content, effectively creating a fast lane for those who can pay more. Now you may be wondering, what does this have to do with me? Well, a lot actually. If net neutrality is dismantled, your internet service provider could potentially slow down your access to certain websites, unless those websites pay a premium. This could mean slower streaming speeds for your favorite shows, or longer loading times for news articles. It could even mean you have to pay more for your internet service. And that's just one example. Corporate influence can also affect the quality of public services we receive. If a corporation heavily involved in private healthcare lobbies for reduced funding for public hospitals, it could lead to longer wait times and lower quality care for those who rely on these services. Or consider the case of corporations that produce harmful products like tobacco or sugary drinks. If these corporations successfully lobby against regulations on their products, it could lead to a rise in health issues like heart disease or diabetes among the general population. Of course, it's not all doom and gloom. Corporations can also use their influence for good, lobbying for laws that protect the environment or funding campaigns that promote social justice. But the fact remains, when corporations have a say in our democratic processes, it can have a very real impact on our day-to-day -day lives. In the end, it's about balance. It's about ensuring that corporations are held accountable for their actions and that their influence is used to benefit society as a whole, not just their bottom line. It's about making sure that our democracy is truly by the people, for the people, and not just those with the deepest pockets. As you can see, the effects of corporate influence can be felt in our everyday lives, but is there anything we can do about it? 
Is it possible to balance corporate influence and still maintain a healthy democracy? Now, that's a question that's been on many minds, and the simple answer is, yes, it's possible. But how? Well, it all comes down to implementing some key safeguards and reforms. Firstly, we need to talk about transparency and lobbying. Lobbying is not inherently bad, it can provide valuable insights to lawmakers. However, it becomes a problem when it's done behind closed doors, and that's where transparency comes in. If every lobbying activity is made public, we can ensure that decisions are not being unduly influenced by corporate interests. Think of it as shining a light into the shadowy corners of politics. Next, let's discuss campaign finance reform. The reality is, campaign financing can often skew the political landscape in favor of those with deeper pockets. To prevent this, we need to limit the amount of money corporations can donate to political campaigns. This would create a more level playing field, allowing candidates with less financial backing but strong ideas to compete fairly. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, is citizen engagement. Democracy, after all, is about the power of the people. Citizens need to be proactive, informed, and engaged. They need to know who is funding their representatives and how it might influence their decisions. We can utilize technology to make this information easily accessible and in turn, empower citizens to hold their representatives accountable. Of course, these solutions are not a magic bullet. They require political will, public support, and rigorous enforcement. But they can go a long way in ensuring that our democratic processes are not hijacked by corporate interests. So, as we wrap up this discussion, let's not forget that balancing corporate influence is not just possible, it's necessary. It's about ensuring that our democracy remains of the people, by the people, and for the people. Change might seem daunting, but remember, democracy is about the power of the people. So, we've journeyed through the complex world of corporate influence in democracy. But what have we learned? We've delved deep into the power of corporations in our democratic processes, a power that can shape society and the rules we live by. From the boardrooms of Wall Street to the halls of Congress, corporations wield a significant influence. They have the resources and the clout to lobby for their interests, often with a potency that can drown out other voices. Lobbying, as we've seen, is a double-edged sword. On one hand, it's a necessary means for industries to communicate their needs and perspectives to policymakers. On the other, it can lead to disproportionate influence, tipping the scales of democracy in favor of those with the deepest pockets. We also examined campaign financing, a crucial element in our political landscape. Corporations can contribute vast sums to campaigns, shaping the narrative and potentially swaying the outcome of elections. And while this may be legal, we must question the ethical implications and the impact on the democratic process. The real impact, however, is on us, the citizens. Our voices can be drowned out by the cacophony of corporate interests. Policies that favor these interests can lead to a wide range of issues, from economic inequality to environmental degradation. But there's hope yet. We've discussed potential solutions to balance corporate influence. Transparency in lobbying and campaign financing, stricter regulations, and greater citizen participation can help restore the balance. And let's not forget the power of consumer choice. As consumers, we can choose to support companies that align with our values, that promote fair practices and sustainable methods, and that respect the democratic process. In essence, the role of corporations in democracy is a complex one, filled with both challenges and opportunities. It's a delicate balance that requires constant vigilance and active participation from all of us. As we sign off, remember this. In a democracy, your voice matters. So let's not let it be drowned out by corporate dollars.